So um, some of you guys may have known we're doing this. Um, we're going to start off with a fun game uh, involving um, parents and students. So we're going to play Guess That Teacher. So like we had said, using the reactions on your Zoom app with that thumbs up or the clap. And then like we said, if you don't have access to that or you can't um, find that right now, just use your hands um, to do that. And basically we're going to have different questions and you're gonna have to guess just blindly, not knowing us at all, which teacher did or has that. So we'll go ahead and get started. So the first one is, just kidding. I have a technical difficulty. Hold on one <laughs> second. I'm pressing the arrows and it's not going. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. I need to go down here. All right. So, guess yes. which teacher went to Mizzou? Miss Denker is a thumbs up, and Miss Ellis, me, is a clap. And I'll probably give like 10 seconds or so for guesses. Mrs. Wood or Miss Denker, do you want to tell me when you think you're, it's, a good, it's a good time to go on to the next slide? It looks like we've got a lot of clappers and a lot of thumbs up. I'd say we're good to go. All right. So it was me who went to Mizzou. I graduated in the spring of 2017. And yeah, M-I-Z. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide. Which teacher played the violin? So Miss Denker is a thumbs up. Mrs. Wood is a clap this time. All right, let's do a three, two, one. It was Miss Denker. Miss Denker, you can talk to this. <laughs> yeah, so when I was in fourth grade, that's a picture of me. Um, just like you guys, I played the violin at my elementary school. I hope a lot of you were considering signing up for strings. Mrs. Schisler is so, so excited for you guys to be signing up in the next week or two for that program. All right, next slide. This fourth grade teacher has a son named Henry. So Miss Ellis, me is a thumbs up and Mrs. Wood is a clap. All right, let's go three, two, one. It's Mrs. Wood. That's my Henry. If you're in my class, you might see him on a Zoom here or there. He was kind of our mascot during the spring, <laughs> during the spring <laughs> online learning. So you'll hear about Henry from time to time. Henry loves to say hi. He's, He's awesome. He's so cute. Okay, next slide. This fourth grade teacher has taught kindergarten in the past. So Miss Dunker is a thumbs up and I am a clap. All right, ready? Three, two, one. It was Miss Denker. Yeah, last year I taught kindergarten, but I am so excited to be teaching fourth grade this year and it's gonna be a great year. So excited. All right, this fourth grade teacher loves to play volleyball. So Miss Ellis, me is a thumbs up, Mrs. Wood is a clap. All right, you ready? Three, yes. two, one. That is me. I grew up playing volleyball. Um, I played a lot of sports when I was about your guys' age, but once I got to sixth grade, I decided to dedicate all my time to volleyball. So if you love volleyball, we're gonna have a great conversation. I love talking about it. <laughs> all right, I think this might be the last one. This yep. fourth grade teacher loves to watch The Office. Miss Denker is a thumbs up. Mrs. Wood is a clap. All right, three, two, one. It is Mrs. Wood. That's me. Lots of Netflix <laughs> over this quarantine in my house. I think I could probably tell you every word to every episode. Michael Scott is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> we have to have a good laughter in quarantine. 
Well, thank you guys for playing with us. We are just really excited that we got to do something interactive with the fourth grade, uh, fourth grade kiddos before you guys have to go. Um, this next set of information is for mostly for your parents. You're welcome to stay, but I told some of my kids it's kind of boring grown up stuff. So if you want to leave, we don't, we don't mind. That's okay. But we just want to say we thank you for coming on and playing with us. And we will go ahead and switch over to some parent stuff now. I'm going to go ahead and get my screen set up to the next um, presentation. Okay. And then, um, parents, we have sent out the curriculum slides. You have access to them. They're also on our fourth grade hub so that you can access them throughout the entire school year. Um, we're going to spend the majority of this time going over the specific things that pertain to virtual learning because we figure that's probably what you're, you know, the most curious about. Um, if you have any questions that pertain to the group, please use the chat box to ask them, similar to how um, our principals did during the uh, town halls that they hosted. And then we are monitoring that chat box and we will get those questions answered for you. Um, but before we get to questions, we're gonna kind of just go through and explain a little bit more of some of the slides that are included. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ellis, do you wanna go to the start of the curriculum slide? Yes. Or the distance, I think it's 12. Yeah, if you go to 12, that's perfect. Okay. So just a reminder, please mute your microphone just with so many people in. It can be a little distracting if there's background noise. Um, we have the chat box. I just mentioned that to ask questions. And then if there are questions that we're unsure of, we will make sure to share those notes out with you um, after this meeting. And we also are recording this meeting. So if you need to go back and look at it or you know a family who hasn't had the opportunity to see this information, um, we will post this on our hub as well so you can get back to it. Awesome. So um, the first thing that we uh, wanted to go over was just general distance learning expectations. Um, a lot of this is really similar to the spring. Um, one of the biggest tips that teachers can give families at home is to for help helping students prepare for success is to first designate a learning space. Um, that can be small, big, it can be minimal, maximum, whatever works for you guys at home. Um, but just Having that learning space that, you know, requires you to get out of bed, get there, and start learning. Um, another thing we recommend is having all learning materials on hand. Um, so just kind of having them together. Um, we'll have notebooks. You guys had, you know, different math papers and, you know, packs of loose leaf, et cetera, sent home. So um, just finding a safe space or a good space for all of that. And um, we'll have... We'll have... Oh, <laughs> time for the students to organize that those materials like we've designated time as teachers to help them get those notebooks labeled get those folders labeled mm -hmm. so all of that stuff that came home it can look very overwhelming don't worry about doing much with it now we've set aside time this coming week to help them organize that and just figure out what's going to be used for what um i just know when you guys get that bag through the drive through line some of your eyes were huge so we just <laughs> want to let you know that we will help you through all of that information yes um, the next tip we have for being successful is to bookmark frequently used sites. Um, teachers are going to definitely be communicating this saying, hey guys, we're going to be doing this a lot in math. It'd be good to bookmark it. Um, and we'll obviously explain how to do that if students are I'm not sure. But just kind of bookmarking those good go-tos. Luckily, Parkway does have, we're still using Clever if you are familiar with that. And they have actually uploaded a lot of apps to that a lot more than we've had in the past, which is a good um, kind of home base for a lot of the things, but also there may be some websites we'll bookmark. Um, the last thing for preparing for success is just to create a system for remembering screen times. We do understand that, you know, parents are probably working from home. There's maybe more, more than one student working at home. So having alarms or a planner or just sticky notes or something like that, to where you can remember those screen times and checking that schedule is gonna be super helpful. Um, and then in general, we have our Zoom meeting expectations. Um, again, these are really similar to the spring, but the first thing we have is just finding a quiet space free from distractions, um, like pets, TV. We had, I know Mrs. Wood and I could probably share, Miss Dunker too, we had a lot of pet shares last year. It was constantly like, my cat this, my dog this, which we love pets, I'm an animal lover. But we want to focus on work this year <laughs> um, and then 
uh, to when your student signs in. Since if they're with their Parkway email, it might just automatically do their first and last name, but their name should at least be their first name and their last initial, and those are per Parkway um, requirements. The next thing is pretty obvious following teacher's directions. Um, we were really successful with this last year. Students were really respectful of that, um, like muting a microphone. And then we'll talk about breakout rooms. Um, students will learn about that the first week of school. That is a new feature that Zoom has. And basically it's so students can break out into small groups and teachers can pop into each of those. Um, and lastly is just to utilize the chat feature only for questions and school related items um, directed towards the teacher. So no like, hi Susie, or hey, what's up? <laughs> We're gonna stop that and then um, just have it for school related items. So that is just overall distance learning expectations. And one quick thing about the first name, last initial, the reason that we're asking to do that is we will be recording um, each lesson that we teach and student names might be on, on the screen. And so we are recording the lessons so that families can access them at later time. So we just wanna protect your privacy and your students' privacy because those videos will be shared. Um, if you are not comfortable with your students even first name on there, maybe we could work out a system with your classroom teacher to do initials or a class number. But we just wanted to give you that heads up that videos will be recorded and shared out with other families um, in case they need them for you know, follow-up learning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, here are just a few organizational things that we hope will help you moving forward with distance learning. So the first thing that you're going to get from us teachers on Fridays is you will be getting this peek at the week, which it looks similar to this image on the left. What you will see is upcoming lessons and topics for the upcoming week. So on Friday, you will have kind of a view of what your student will be learning. This will be the same across the grade level. Um, if I'm teaching something on Monday in math, Ms. Denker and Ms. Ellis are also teaching that exact same thing. Um, so this is just so you can see what the topics are, what the lessons are coming up. Um, like I said, we will email this out to you on Friday. This will be kind of our newsletter, and then you might get specific updates from your teacher that pertain to your class. Then on that peek at the week slide, you will see these buttons on the left-hand side that will take you to the small group schedule. So we will have time after the mini lessons to work with students in small groups. This slide, you do not need edit access to because we will plug student names in you will get them on Friday so that you can see what day of the week your student is expected to be present for a small group. Because for example, in math, the work time is nine to 9.45. There might be a day that your student is on for a group or a one-on-one -on -one conference, but then there might be other days that your student is not on. So we wanna make sure that you have this schedule ahead of time on Fridays so that your family can plan out, you know, what time you need to be accessible on the screen. Um, this will look different teacher to teacher because obviously we're pulling our own groups and individual conferences. Um, the other heads up we want to give you is that the first week of school, we are not pulling small groups at this time. What we're planning to do is during that work time, we will leave our Zoom open and students can stay just with their microphones muted. They can stay on and work. Um, they can work with the zoom open and just pop in if they have a question for us because we understand that this first week is going to be a lot of familiarizing ourselves with what's going on um and so we don't want to necessarily have kids also having to worry about what time they need to log on for their group so the first week of school after math reading and writing our zoom will be open kind of like an office hour kind of thing and we'll also pop in and ask kids questions just checking in on them um, I just noticed somebody asked, these slides are available right now. They were emailed to you on Wednesday and they are also linked on our fourth grade hub. So the two things to look for just to help your families get organized the week before, you'll have your peak at the week. There is not one this week. And then the small group schedule, we are not pulling small groups this first week of school. We'll start that the second week of school. Um, and of course, we're happy to answer any questions that you have about those if you We'll answer those later on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So these are those frequently used sites that we mentioned to help you stay organized. And we think that these are the ones that are most important that are used often. So if you want to bookmark these or you have access to this slide, 
so that you can find these resources and links easily to access them. Mm -hmm. So this next one um, just talks about communication um, and kind of how us as a grade level will be communicating with you, with the parents, as well as the best way for families to get a hold of us. So starting over here in the top left, um, so the weekly newsletter, you're probably used to your teacher sending something out, um, whether it's paper or virtual. Our newsletter this year is going to be that peak of the week that Mrs. Wood had mentioned. So basically what it communicates is what we're teaching um, each week, just in a quick nutshell. Obviously, if you have any specific questions about any of those, um, you know, you can reach out to your teacher, um, but that's what is going to be our newsletter as we start with virtual learning. Um, so, and again, that has all the small groups and conferring a, as schedules as well. The next thing is some, a lot of you have been joining our faith, Facebook fourth grade Facebook support group. Um, we are encouraging all families to join if you uh, want to, if you are comfortable. Basically, it's a space for families to connect and support each other after hours when teachers may not be available. So teachers will check here and there. We will not be constantly active on it, but it's a way for you to ask, you know, like a quick grade level question, um, or if it's like a general question. Obviously, if it's more specific to curriculum or your, chi your child, you know, send your teacher an email or give them a call, whatever um, is best. And then there is a link right there to join. It is also at the very bottom of the homepage on our fourth grade website. Um, and it was also included in that email. So there's lots of opportunities for you to join there. Um, for communication for the three of us, um, we all have obviously our Parkway emails. Um, that's probably one of the best ways to get a hold of us, at least during the day. Uh, teachers are going to be doing our best to get back to you as quickly as possible, definitely guaranteeing that 24 hour um, time slot, but definitely getting back to you very quickly um, or as quickly as possible. We also all have Google Voice phone numbers. This is connected to our cell phone. It's just a different um, phone number. So if you need to call a teacher during the school day, or you could even shoot a quick text, um, that would be fine with that Google Voice number. That's a great op option. Um, and then Ms. Denker is in the process of getting her class Facebook set up, but um, we all will have class Facebooks. Um, your teacher probably has communicated at this point, or if not, we're just going to be posting, you know, in a normal non-COVID world, we would be posting pictures and videos of the fun things we do in class and the things we're learning. Obviously, that's a little more limited this year, so we're hoping to post, you know, fun class meeting games. We've got some fun things planned next week or, um, you know, just different pictures. And then, um, yeah, that's basically it. So. Are there any questions for this communication slide? Awesome. And then this is just the, uh, we're here, we're live. <laughs> um, there was, if you didn't get a chance to see, PTO did add a couple of slides of information. So you guys, I'm not gonna go through any of that information, but that is there for you um, on your own time. Um, but, that's basically what we've got for you guys so far. Um, you, I will get to any questions in a second, but I do want to say from the fourth grade team, we know that this is obviously very different. We're all getting used to it. Um, and we're all going to get through this together as cliche and sad as that's been. But um, we're really excited for this year. Our team's been working super, super hard to make this as great of an experience as possible. Um, so yeah, that's what we've got for you guys. Would Miss Denker, anything want to add? I don't think so. I'm super excited. This is my first year at Barrett, so I'm super excited to get to know all the families and students. And yeah, um, Mrs. Wood and Miss Ellis are awesome, and we're so excited for next week. Awesome. All right, so, so let's have your questions. What are you wondering about? We're here to help. We've got about 30 minutes that we can help answer anything you're yes. wondering or walk through. Um, Zoom links will be the same all year. So we actually will post those classroom links and then that will be posted in your student's Google Classroom. Um, you'll be able to get to that each day. It'll be the same. 
Um, how big will the small groups be? It just depends on the work that we're doing. Um, so it could be up to five kids, it could be less. Again, it just kind of depends on that day, that activity, what we're planning and what we've got going on. Mm -hmm. The next question is, if my student goes to a reading teacher, when will that happen? So you should have heard um, communication soon from our reading specialist on when they will see your students. Um, I know that they are not pulling, I, I don't believe they're pulling reading groups this first week of school. We want kids to be with kind of with their homeroom and do that community building. So that will be coming soon. The next question is, will Google Meet ever be used? We are switching over to Zoom this school year. Um, Parkway has chosen Zoom as our video platform. Um, Zoom just has a lot cooler features right now than Google Meet has with the breakouts. We have digital uh, whiteboards that the teachers can use. There's just a lot of neat things that we like in Zoom right now, so we will be utilizing Zoom for now. Yes. And then the next question is, uh, what time on Monday do we start? So every day students will log on at 8.30. We will start with a uh, morning meeting and we will end our day at 3.30. Yes. Great question. And that last hour of the day, um, I think I've gotten a couple emails and this has been a common question of just what is that asynchronous time? So um, for the most part, during all of the uh, different subjects throughout the day, we start with math and then we have reading. Later in the afternoon, we have writing and then science slash social, study, social studies. And so that's always gonna be you know, synchronous with your teacher. Um, but that last chunk of the day, 2.30 to 3.30, is that um, hour for your student to, um, obviously teacher directed, we'll let them know what they're gonna be doing during that time, but that will be um, asynchronous learning time where your student's able to log off and kind of work at their own pace. Oh, awesome, thank you. Somebody asked if they have the slides after the meeting and then somebody commented the link. So thank you for doing Perfect. that. Um, somebody asked if there will be group online activities and projects. Yes, there will. Um, we actually have a really cool breakout room coming in week two. Yes. So I'm really excited for that. They're gonna get to work together on um, escaping an amusement park. So get geared up for that. <laughs> These fun. are great questions. I know the answers to these. I feel good. Keep them coming. <laughs> Is this chat box recorded to use as a reference later? So they do record, and this is something good to share with your students too. All of the chats, we get a transcript of that chat afterwards. So again, remember to tell your student anything that they put in the chat is recorded and saved to their teacher, even if it goes one-on-one -on -one to the student, um, if it's not to the group. So yes, this chat box is recorded. We can sum up the talking points and get that out to you for sure. Great question. On Google Classroom, we'll, we'll I cannot speak tonight. Holy cow. <laughs> on Google Classroom, will there be dates on the work? Yes. Um, well, so like due dates, is that what you're asking? Or are you asking like what day they should do the activity? Because I think we could answer both. Um, we are setting up our Google Classrooms and each week will have its own kind of category. So when activities come out, they'll be housed in a week. So everything will be there. And then the teachers will um, indicate, you know, this is, this is a Monday activity or this is a Tuesday activity. The other thing that's nice about Google Classroom is we can schedule activities so I've already scheduled out a whole week's worth of stuff. So you won't have to, on Monday, you're not gonna have to sift through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday's work. Things will just show up as the students need access to them. Hmm. And then there will be, um, if there's a due date for something, it will be indicated either in the teacher directions, Google Classroom, it will be indicated to your student. Hmm. Next question is, will all of the children's classes be on Google Classroom or a mixture of Schoology and Google Classroom? So That's we- a Oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, it's a great question. So Schoology, um, the way it's being utilized, at least for fourth grade, it's kind of the, what we're calling the entry point to all of the resources. So um, you'll actually see matching what we call buttons or those black circles that you've seen on the fourth grade hub website. Um, those will match what's in Schoology and link exactly to 
what you need. But to answer your question, it's all going to be housed in Google Classroom. It's really easy for the kids to use, teachers to use, as well as um, being able to push out assignments um, and activities to do. So it will mainly be Google Classroom, but Schoology is there just as like an extra kind of entryway to get to those things. So, but, um, but special classes will be on, I believe our specialists are using Schoology. So your students yes. should be familiar with logging into Schoology um, because we also will use it for some district assessments, but that's nothing. We've used Schoology in the past, like when we're in school to take this district assessment. So those will be um, there. So I would be sure that your student is familiar getting to Schoology and then they should be set because that will link them to Google Classroom. Somebody mm -hmm. asked, how is um, Clever different than Schoology? So what Clever is, which is awesome, it's this one-time login that saves your students' logins to every other app that Parkway has utilized. So our math curriculum, they access it through Clever. They don't have to bookmark it. Our um, science curriculum, the online resources that they would use, they can access that through Clever. Dreambox, they access that through Clever. So instead of us asking your fourth grader to remember 25 logins to all of the wonderful resources that Parkway has purchased for us to use, Clever is their one-time login, and then you don't have to remember all of those logins. So when they log into Clever, they'll want to use their Parkway information. Um, and again, Parkway will have Clever pre-bookmarked on your student's Chromebook. So that's an awesome resource for them to be able to get to that. Mm -hmm. And we'll again, our very, I think it's like day one or two, we're walking your students through how to access all of these things, especially yes. Clever, like how to get onto your math online work, um, different things like that. So we will walk you guys through that. We will have tutorials and videos that you can reference too. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a question about, will verification that students' work has been turned in be sent to parents? So you can see um, in Google Classroom, once your student has joined, you can get parent access to Google Classroom under people, you'll see, and you can add a parent account. Um, and then you can play with the settings to make that work for your family. You can have Google Classroom send you a weekly report of what your student has going on, um, a daily report. So you can customize those parent settings in Google Classroom to meet your needs. Mm -hmm. If we as teachers are getting concerned that things are, you know, we will be in touch with you. I don't want you to, you know, think that we're just putting stuff out there and whatever happens, happens. We will definitely be in touch with you weekly if things are missing or, you know, maybe a lot of times there's a button that the kids have to click to turn in the assignment. So sometimes yes. it's just that button gets forgotten to be clicked. Um, but we will absolutely be in touch with you if we're noticing things aren't happening. But something that would be awesome is for sure to check out that parent account that you can add to Google Classroom. Um, the next question, it says all specials classes. Oh, I think Mrs. Frazier is helping us clarify oh. this. All specials <laughs> classes, art, music, PE will be on Schoology. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, next question, how is Clever different from Schoology? Which we covered that one. Okay, and then if I didn't pick up school supplies today, will we be able to get them next week? Contact the office on that one. Um, they really want us limited in the building, so we will not be teaching from school. Uh, the office would be your best bet to contact on that. Will there be homework that they will have to work on outside of the last hour of the day? How much time do you expect that to take? So we kind of referenced that in our curriculum slides. We know that this is a humongous transition to be doing all of school at home. So fourth grade is not assigning homework at this time. Um, we do ask that, you know, if you have an assignment that day, I would make sure that your student feels caught up because, you know, how things can snowball. So maybe that means you do end up working 10 minutes past that 3.30 time or you jump back on later to finish something up. But I would just make sure your day's work is done. We have some ideas for optional homework as, if, as a family, you would like your student to do something additional. Um, reading 30 minutes a night is always a wonderful idea. Longer is even better. We always encourage reading. Um, and then there's some additional math things that your student can do, but we will not be assigning formal homework while we're in this virtual setting. Are parents going to be notified if assignments are missed? Um, and we kind of uh, touched base with that. So like Mrs. Woodhead said, we 
will obviously be in contact with you. Um, we are taking attendance every day um, and we are, you know, keeping an eye on any patterns we notice, like if there's a student missing every day at the 2.15 science time. Um, we will definitely keep in contact with you if we notice something that we think is, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk to you guys about that. Um, but in terms of individual assignments, like Mrs. Wood said, you are more than welcome to join that Google Classroom and the parent lens and access, and that way you can kind of check in on your child's work um, individually. And then the next question is, when will we receive my student's login slash password for the Chromebook? It should have come from Parkway as a district. I believe they were reset and they should be sent out to you. Mm -hmm. That should have been a Parkway piece of information. I'm gonna type in the technology help number. Um, I think they are, they're closed on the weekend. So your next bet is to get in contact with them um, on Monday. But that's the technology help desk and you can call them and that's probably your best bet because Mr. Walker, our technology um, person in our building was helping with Chromebook distribution. Um, so that's probably your best direct, I need help with my login contact. That, um, okay, so three to five is to use the same information from last year. Thank you again. I love having all these Parkway parents in the grade level. You guys don't understand yes. how blessed <laughs> we are to have all of the support in the grade. It's wonderful. Um, they should be the same. So if I were you, do a test run this weekend. If you can't get in to your teacher an email and we can help track things down for you too. It's the same one from last year. Awesome. Thank you. So awesome. this is like great things for the Facebook group too. If it's Saturday at nine o'clock at night and your kid is like, how do I log in? And you can't email or call us, jump in the Facebook group. Cause it sounds like a lot of people are, you know, really know ins and outs of this stuff. So thank you. We yes. appreciate that. We do. Are there any? I think we skipped yeah. over one. It said, when oh. will we need instruments for music? Oh. Oh. Ms. Schisler, are you still here? <laughs> Hi, Mr. Harris, are you referring to orchestra instruments or general music? What are you looking for? Uh, orchestra, uh, the strings classes. Thanks. Okay, so there was an email that went out from our coordinator and it had, um, I'm sorry, I'm in Zach's room and I don't <laughs> have my computer. I'm logged on in his little Chromebook. I can't put the link directly in, but I can send you an email. There was an email that went out with the um, orchestra program brochure and registration information. In fourth and fifth grade, students provide their own instrument to participate unless a student is in financial need. So if and there are any families on here that are in that position, please reach out to me. Um, I'm, I know I can help you, so keep me posted. Other than that, check your email for that brochure and I can, uh, you know, you can always shoot me an email and I can send it to you directly too. All the information is on that, where to register, what is included in a, uh, an instrument outfit, a list of local music stores to rent instruments from, and, uh, you know, and all that. So take a look at that. You should have gotten that email maybe a week or so ago. I know lots of registrations are coming in. So I'm looking yes. forward to seeing your kiddos. Yes, thank you. We did get that. We have it. Um, we've already registered. I see Great. exactly where we can go to rent um, an instrument. It just doesn't have the date on when we have to rent it by so that they can have it in hand to play. Thank you. Um, well, I, my hope is that we start our small group pullouts the third week of school. I'm going to be checking with classroom teachers and pulling groups for students who might have questions that first and second week, making sure we get all the supplies ready, contacting families and that kind of thing. The hope is that we're going to start our small group pull-ups at the very beginning of the third week of school. So that's when we would hope that most kids will have instruments in hand. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks for all the great questions. Thanks, Ms. Schisler. Yes, I'm telling you guys, you. this is like the best benefit. <laughs> <laughs> Having all these parents, teachers in our group. Um, somebody asked about supplies. We would like, we, a lot of families did purchase their own supplies. If you want your supplies to be left at school, please notify the office. Students will not be able to bring supplies to school when we start in-person learning. 
you will have to use the parkway purchased supplies. That's just to cut down on things coming into the building. Um, but even if you do not want the supplies, we would still like you to pick up your bag because we have reading materials, math materials, science materials, and just a bunch of various things that we want to give to you to keep at home. Um, but we can pull your supplies out of that bag if you do not want them and you have not picked that up yet. Just contact the office. And then for parents getting notified regarding assignments, when you go into your child's Google Classroom, oh, I, I just pulled up mine and I wanted to show you that I can have the same view as you since I'm the instructor. Um, but across the top- Do you want me to share my screen, Mrs. Wood? I can pull up my Google Classroom really quick and show that people- But it's not, it's not there because we're an instructor. So they, it's not the oh, okay. I know, that's what I was thinking we could do too. Um, okay. Across the top, you'll see stream, classwork, and then people. When you click people, you should see your child's name, and then you can click to add yourself as a parent connected to your it's child's there. account. There, I noticed somebody in my classroom already has their parent signed up and attached to their child, so then you'll get those updates. I'm with all the kids stuff, my kids. <laughs> okay, and then we got assignments. Someone mentioned that the tech line is super busy, so keep calling. Yeah, yeah they're probably getting a million phone calls, but <laughs> keep, keep calling. <laughs> um, couldn't figure out how to get on this Zoom with her Chromebook and how to use mine. So um, what should, hopefully what should be working is, since it's a Parkway Chromebook, once you log in with that Parkway login, which um, everyone is saying is the same as before um, for that for three through five, um, once you log in with that, so it's like when you open up your computer and it's you're logging in as that user and then that account is automatically pretty much connected to any application that is um, on the Chromebook. So then once you log into Zoom, with or click on that zoom link you're automatically connected to that parkway google account um and then that should be your child's name i could be wrong <laughs> but i'm pretty sure that, that is um how basically once you log into the chromebook with that parkway login you're good to go after that and we will have those zoom links posted in classroom so they should be able to just click that link and then it should bring them to zoom we totally are ready for all the bumps in the road on Monday. So if you are having a hard time getting in, shoot us a quick email and we'll try to be monitoring that too so we can kind of troubleshoot with you. We kind of are expecting this first week to just be getting over a lot of technical hurdles, but we will figure it out and we're there to help you. Yes. Yeah, so this link for Zoom was sent to parents and not to your students, so they might not have had access to this just based on different permissions. Um, that could have been it too. Somebody asked about not picking up supplies. Um, they do not need specific color folders or notebooks if you purchase something on your own. We just ask that you have four notebooks and four folders. We will help the students label those and get them organized. They don't, we don't really, they don't need to be anything fancy for us. Oh, yeah. so that makes sense. The problem was that the link was Mm -hmm. For this particular Zoom was sent to parents, not students, so it was harder to access. That would, yeah, that makes sense. So ideally, once your student is logging into the Zoom links that we are pushing out through Google Classroom and having access and they're logged in, then that should be pretty smooth sailing from there. And I see this next comment is from one of my students. I'm going to give you, I, it sounds like you might not have gotten my welcome back email. So let me check on that because <laughs> I want to make sure you get all that information. I'm writing it down to send you a, an email after this and I will get you that code. So I'm really sorry that you did not get that email. I will make sure to get you your Google code. Perfect. Um, will students need to check their email slash will info be sent to them via email? That is a great question and the answer is no. Students will not need to regularly check their email. In fact, if they went to check it, I wouldn't be surprised if there was over a thousand emails with like <laughs> Google Classroom notifications. I kid you not, that's probably what it is. Um, but no, they will not, we will not be communicating with students primarily that way. If they, they are able to send us an email through their student email if they, if they like and they know how to use that. Um, and we'll get those and communicate that way. But um, mainly the way we'll be communicating is through Zoom, on Google Classroom, um, you know, contacting parents as needed. Um, so 
I would say though, this is a really great year to really help your student understand that independence piece. So if your student does have a question about something, rather than saying, mom, can you email Miss Wood and ask her, you know, whatever, we have a button where students can click it and it will actually open up an email like draft for them. So I would say, you know, encourage your students to ask their teachers questions that they're wondering. They can do that through email, they can do that on the Google Classroom stream. Um, and communicate with us via email, you know, when a question arises. However, we aren't going to be sending out like, hey, on Monday, everybody needs to check your email to know what the, the deal is this week. But utilize the email as your students um, would like to. I think we're caught. Are we caught up on questions? Did yeah. we miss any of them? Okay. Nope. We're doing great. Thank you guys for your questions. These are all great things to think through. Yes. Well, like we said, if there are not any other questions, we are recording this video. It will be uploaded on the hub. I will, we'll go through this chat and kind of sum up some of the points in case you're unable to, you know, you don't want to rewatch this whole video and you just want to get to the good stuff. We can sum that up and also put that on the fourth grade hub for you. Um, mm -hmm. Parents, I would definitely bookmark that. That's going to be a great source of Kind of like your entry point the students have their entry point of schoology our fourth grade hub is where you're going to find pretty much anything and everything that you should need um again we can be reached via email uh my sound is going out oops sorry i'm at school if you need anything you can reach out via email or call us we are here to help you guys yes just know we're going to be flexible understanding throughout this whole process, you know, technology. Sometimes if you ask any of my previous students, I always say technology is not always my friend. So um, we will definitely, you know, take this one day at a time. We really appreciate everyone hopping on here to, um, you know, take the time to just kind of learn about what fourth grade is going to look like this year. Um, we're excited. I'm excited. <laughs> it's gonna be great thank you guys we right. appreciate it it was fun <laughs> seeing everybody this afternoon thank you for joining us it's gonna be a yes. great year Woo! Woo. No fourth grade <laughs> <laughs> all thank right thank you bye guys thank you so much <laughs>